Snakes can be dangerous animals, and an encounter with one could end tragically. So when a little baby ended up between a snake's teeth, his father was terrified. However, an old man saw this and did something truly incredible. Sean was a man who loved to work with the land. He had farmed acres and acres of land ever since he was a young boy, and over the course of his many years, he had become a wealthy and successful man. He never knew how much money could be made from growing your own produce and then selling it, but he was pleasantly surprised when his farming business went from strength to strength. Of course, Sean never did it for the money, he did it for the love of the job. He enjoyed being out there on the land, planting seeds, picking crops, turning the earth, and driving his many machines around. Sean loved to get his hands dirty, and for over 50 years, he worked from dawn till dusk, day after day. However, he knew that he wouldn't be able to keep up the hard work and fast pace indefinitely. At some point, he was going to have to slow down, no matter how much he loved farming. That's why, at some point in his thirties, he met a woman who was equally passionate about the land, and together they settled down and started a family. They had a little boy and named him Steve. He would sometimes go out and help Sean with the farming work, though the boy seemed to have interests away from the land. Steve was majorly put off when one day he encountered some of the local wildlife in the long grass at the end of the patch he and his father were working on. It was a snake, and it hissed and coiled up when the boy nearly stood on it. Steve screeched, and his father came running, telling him to move away from the snake and trying to reassure him that it was not a poisonous animal. The worst it could do was bite, and while the bite would be painful, it would not be deadly. Still, this was enough to shake Steve to his core and put him off farming altogether. From that moment on, he rarely helped Sean out. Eventually, Steve got old enough to make his own choices in life, and much to his parents' dismay, he moved away to California to work for a tech company. Sean had always had plans that Steve would take over the farm one day, inheriting the land and everything on and in it, but it seemed that his son had other plans. Sean had to admit that he was a little disappointed, though he tried his best to support his decision. Sometime in their mid-fifties, his wife got sick, and after a short battle, she passed away, leaving poor Sean all alone. Sure, he had his son, but he was settling down with his own girlfriend, what seemed like a world away. The house suddenly seemed big and empty, with no one but Sean in there, and still, he had to work his fingers to the bone in order to maintain his farm. He thought all was lost until something quite unusual occurred, and he got a phone call from someone telling him something that he never expected. It seemed that Steve's business was floundering in California, and they weren't making as much money as they used to. He and his girlfriend, Laura, were struggling to pay the rent on their home, and they asked if they would be able to move back in with him. Shocked, Sean didn't know what to say. But then Steve told his father something that made his jaw drop open. He would soon be a grandfather. That's right, Laura was pregnant. That sealed the deal, and Sean agreed to the couple moving in. It would be nice to have some company around the house, and Steve had even offered to help pitch in with the farming work, something which Sean would more than happily deal with. So, Steve and his girlfriend moved in, and before long, they were joined by their little baby boy, Martin. Sean was overjoyed to have his family around him again, and although he undeniably missed his wife, he enjoyed that he had been brought closer to his son. And true to his word, Steve helped out on the farm. He would drive the machines every day and do the heavier work that his father could no longer do. It warmed Sean's heart to see how much his son's attitude had changed and how his Californian life had given him some perspective. Sitting behind a desk in a comfy office isn't all fun and games, so to see his son returning to his traditional farming roots made Sean feel proud. Together, the father and son team would work diligently, doing all that needed to be done. And over the course of a year and a half, they got the farm back up and running to the level it used to be before Sean got older and lost his wife. While they were out and about, Steve would bring his son and keep an eye on him as he sat and played in a pop-up tent. Not only did little Martin love being outside, but the tent itself kept him contained. But one day, 
Steve went over to his son to check on him and froze in his tracks at what he saw. His son was making curious noises in the tent, staring at something in the opposite corner. To the child's eyes, the thing in the corner must have been some kind of new and fun toy, something to play with and interact with. But to Steve's more experienced and world-weary eyes, he saw it for what it truly was, a snake, large and coiled up, softly letting out warning hisses after warning hisses. Ever since his interaction with a snake when he was a child, Steve had developed a massive phobia of them. He couldn't stand being around them or even thinking about them. Snakes really were the things of his nightmares, and now he was face to face with one. Steve had no idea what to do. Logically, he knew he needed to get Martin out of there. His son was in danger, and he needed to set him to safety. But no matter how much he knew that he had to do something, his body remained frozen. He had never experienced fear like this before. Sean came trudging over to see what the problem was. Steve said he would only be a moment, and he had been standing at the door of the tent for far too long. Immediately, Sean noticed something was wrong with his son. He had sweat on his brow, and he was frozen to the spot. Frowning, Sean looked into the tent and saw what the issue was. The large snake was hissing and readying itself to strike if there were any fast movements or anyone came too close. But things couldn't get any worse, could they? Well, what happened next really was horrifying. Martin crawled forward a little, and before anyone had a chance to grab him and pull him away, the snake struck and sunk its teeth into the boy's arm. Martin let out a skin-curdling screech and cried as his father and grandfather watched on in horror. Steve looked at his father, and that's when Sean knew he had to do something. So, without a second thought, the old man sprang into action, not even caring about his own safety. Despite his old age, he leapt forward and grabbed the snake's head, squeezing its jaws on either side. As Martin screamed and flailed, the snake refused to let go, and blood ran down the child's arm. Squeezing tighter, Sean knew that sooner or later, it would naturally let go. It was a reflex thing that he had learned years ago. Thankfully, he had never had to use the move until now, but he was praying that it would work. After what seemed like hours but was actually only several long seconds, the snake released its bite, and Sean ran with it from the tent as Steve scooped up his injured boy. The snake was thrown far into the long grass, and Martin was rushed to the hospital. Thankfully, though the snake was non-venomous, it was a lucky miss and could have ended far worse. But the most amazing thing of all was how Sean, an old weathered man, had leapt into action and saved the boy from further suffering. Stephen and Martin both owed him everything because if Sean had not been there, things could have ended much, much worse. Hello everyone, and welcome to the next exciting story. Dad jumped up when adopted dog pounced on daughter, realizing it was sacrificing himself. Before we start today's story, remember to give us a like and subscribe to our channel, and remember to hit the notification bell for more exciting videos. After losing their dog, one family's valiant attempt to adopt another show how important it is to know what you're doing and to save a dog from a shelter, where dogs often come from bad family, they have a sad past. Giving a shelter dog a second chance at life can be one of the most fulfilling moments in anyone's life, but a family can never predict how their new dog will respond to a fatal accident. Adam and Dania DeLuca, who live in Tampa, Florida, with her children, Molly and Joy, and a German Shepherd mix named Bailey, who has long been a big part of the family, so when it died in 2016, everyone was devastated, but it was Dania who was affected the most. Dania has been through some ups and downs in her life and Bailey has been there to comfort her in good times and bad, so just a few days after Bailey passed away, Dania was determined to making a choice in a bad situation that she feels is the best decision for her. She decided to adopt another dog, her family needed it. Little did she know that she was laying the groundwork for a family tragedy. When they started looking for a family pet, the DeLucas decided they wanted to help dogs in need. With more pets than ever needed by previous owners, they wanted to do their part, so Adam and Danny instead of going to a backyard breeder or a pet store, went to a shelter where there are many dogs in need of loving homes, so it was a tough decision. 
Dania even got to meet a wolf-dog mix, but in the end, they settled on a large German shepherd named House, whose background was largely unknown, but they didn't think about that, and put him in immediately introduced to Molly, Seven, and Joey, Four. Adam voiced his concerns early on about whether they had chosen the right dog for the family, whether they had really considered everything, and he didn't want the pressure and desire to quickly replace Bailey to cloud their judgment, but his reservations opinions were quickly swept away as he got caught up in the excitement of the arrival of this new family member, they were getting another dog. After the first week, Dania was thrilled with how House was improving faster than they expected and even protecting the kids, especially Molly. House hit it off with all of us right away, and it's like it's always been a part of our family, and even the neighbors love it, it was meant to be, explained Dania. House has even gotten into the habit of collecting toys on the lawn and protecting them, and the DeLucas feel reassured that they made the right choice. They find it adorable that he is willing to be so protective of their little girl and think his hoarding of toys was cute, but within a month, they weren't so sure. On that fateful morning, Joey and Molly's grandmother came to visit them as usual, and it had been two full months since House had been adopted, so no one expected anything out of the ordinary, and Molly walked to the yard, the big dog followed her like a shadow. As the little girl leaned over to pick up its chew toy from the grass, House began to growl, and as if sensing something was wrong, Adam glanced through the doorway and saw a scene he would never forget, but before he could act it was too late. Molly was lying quietly on the grass, being crushed by the huge German Shepherd. The dog jumped off Molly and sprang forward, its mouth open, its teeth gleaming white, and it hit its mark again and again, with a loud click in its jaw each time, retracts its jaw after each loud click and when Adam and Granny DeLuca arrived on the scene, House let out a cry that chilled them all, and Adam lifted Molly to her feet and hugged her tightly in utter shock. Grandma DeLuca was racing her mind as she ran to her granddaughter, she had heard that dogs could attack people, but she didn't expect it to happen to House, she should have been more careful, she shouldn't let Molly go out alone, but were they all so blinded by the grief of losing Bailey at the time that they refused to see what kind of dog he really was? Granny DeLuca had only one thing on her mind, she had to see if Molly was okay, then she dealt with House, Adam held, while she checked her whole body until she's satisfied she's unharmed, they were surprised to see that the baby didn't have a single scratch, but when they turned their attention to House, Grandma DeLuca screamed, and House struggled to stand up, gasping and drooling, it raised its front paws and seemed to be in pain. Then its breathing became more and more difficult, it fell. Down, House's condition was deteriorating before their eyes, something else was clearly going on here, Grandma DeLuca didn't understand what was happening, and then she saw an eastern diamondback snake entangled in the grass, the most dangerous snake in North America, with a heavy, powerful body and long tusks, these rattlesnake bites have a 30% chance of being fatal, although these snakes are usually not aggressive, but this snake has a protective house to deal with. House has been protecting Molly from danger and has sacrificed himself. He doesn't care if it costs him his life. Grandma DeLuca knows she has to act fast. With House being bitten by a snake, every second counts. Importantly, she rushed House to the nearest veterinarian, the Tampa Bay Veterinary Clinic. Veterinarians immediately began emergency snake bite treatment for the brave dog, but when the rest of the family arrived shortly after, all they could do was wait. The veterinarian on duty, with startling news, told the family that House had been bitten three times by a rattlesnake that injected three times the deadly venom into his body, explaining that usually dogs flinch after the first bite. But because House is fighting for Molly, he stands still and the vet has to administer a total of nine doses of the antivenom via drip, as well as give a blood transfusion. This then led to its inevitable complications, with House's life hanging in the balance, the vet bills began to multiply and the family couldn't afford it, but they were determined to do everything for the dog who risked his life for their daughter, they created a fundraising account to try to raise money for House's treatment, with a goal of $28,000 to cover his medical bills. As news of the dog's heroism spread on social media, the public was overwhelmed and moved by House's fighting spirit, and donations began pouring into the account, and in just a few days, the campaign has already racked up a staggering $51,000, which is almost double DeLuca's original goal. 
Now, with his family and hundreds of Americans cheering for him, House is fighting for his life as much as he fought for Morris, and miraculously, House is he was able to go home in just seven days, luckily he was treated in time and the veterinarians were able to mitigate the massive amount of venom he had absorbed and Dania was by her side the entire time. I could almost say it's a miracle. She told ABC News that things only started to turn around last week. We are really very happy. But fans and followers have always had a question on their minds, everyone wanted to know how House was doing, so Dania started House's own Facebook account to keep him updated and satisfy his fans' demand. She wrote on its Facebook page in 2017 that House was doing well, happy and healthy, with minimal ongoing effects from the venom. It was a hero dog, of course, and now that he's the poster dog for Heidi's legacy, the DeLucas are determined to try and help the shelter as much as possible, which is where it came from. They've signed up to be full-time foster parents, and they're waiting for new families to come along and provide other dogs like House with a loving home.